Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Steph. This is episode 42, Sleeves. Lots and lots of sleeves. <laughs> um, here it is. What is it? It's Sunday. It's playoffs. Play football day. I think it's the 20th, January 20th. Um, it's a sunny day out, and I am not really in the mood to record, but I want to make sure I get this up there, and I feel like I don't have a lot to show you, but that's because things are blocking, it's not because I haven't been knitting, so I'm just going to jump right in. <laughs> First thing on the needles right now is, since I'm knitting on it, I will show it to you, is the Milo Vest by Georgie Hollum. <clears throat> And that is knit with U.S. size 5s. I am using Cascade 220 Superwash in the color 1919, which around here we affectionately call Olive Grinhauer. <laughs> um, I lost a couple days this week. You might hear it in my nose. I was sick. Um, Roland had like a minor cold and then Steve and I both got it and it was no big thing but it was enough to knock me down and make me tired. I wasn't super miserable, I was just tired. So I went to bed early two nights this week trying to get ahead of it which used to work really really well for me when I would get a cold and the last few times I've tried that like hey let me get some extra sleep and see if that will help me overcome this. It hasn't worked at all. It really hasn't like disappointingly so. So <clears throat> that was a couple nights I lost to that, and then I had sort of set myself a goal. I was, you know, we are having the dark and stormy knit along over on the RAV group, and we're well over 20 sweaters in progress, which is awesome. I love it. But um, and the knit along goes until February 28th. So if you haven't cast on and you want to, there are plenty of people that just cast on last week. So join the group knit it up, be eligible for some great prizes. Um, <clears throat> where was I going with that? <laughs> oh, so I had set myself the goal this week of, okay, I have 200 yards left to knit on my Harvest Moon sweater, and I have less than that to go on the Milo Vest for Roland. So finish one or the other so that I have, because those three sweaters have been, well, this is the vest, but have been my main focus for my knitting in the evenings when I have those big chunks of time. And so finish the Harvest Moon or the Milo so that I can really focus in on the Dark and Stormy because I don't want to have three sweaters on my needles. That's a lot of sweater knitting and I'm more of an accessories girl as of late. So, so I did. So I lost two days to being sick and then I lost two nights to um, we're finishing up those sleeves <laughs> and um, needless to say, well I guess it's not needless to say because I'm going to say it, <laughs> I did finish my Harvest Moon. It is soaking right now. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What a bad podcaster. I could have timed this a little better, but I, it's not soaking. It's blocking. I put it, I finished it yesterday afternoon at about 2.30 after Roland took a two and a half hour nap. It was glorious. He had shot the day before, so he's sleeping a little, a little more than usual. So anyways, I finished it at 2.30. I watched two episodes of Mad Men. I was like, oh my god, he's still asleep. Oh my god, okay. And so I put it into soak and then promptly, which I have a big bucket that I fill with, um, with this stuff. <laughs> Eucalyn, I think, is the one I use. It's a lavender scent. Anyways, a wool wash. I fill with wool wash and water, and I leave it in the shower. Well, my day got away from me yesterday, and so at 10.30 last night when I went to go to bed, it was still sitting in the shower in the bucket. I was just like, oh, man. So I didn't take it out of the bucket, and I had thought that if I soaked it and by, like, 4 o'clock got it pinned out to dry because the edges roll up quite a bit, um, I might have it when I record for you guys today, so I don't. I'm sorry. I do have some pictures of it blocking. Here is my Harvest Moon cardigan. It's a short sleeve cardigan, as you can see, with this wonderful yoke. And you can see maybe it's pinned down, but my triple button detail that I put into it. Those are the glorious pockets, the reason to knit it. 
And then my hem that was rolling like crazy. This lovely I cord bind off is pinned down right now. So it's blocking Star Trek towel. <laughs> so yes, we do have a Star Trek beach towel. I know, it's from when Steve was like 10 years old and Next Generation was on the air. Um, we, it's the scratchiest towel you've ever seen, but it's great for laying out. So we still have it around for some reason. Don't ever take it in public. Uh, <laughs> this is not public. Um, yeah, so for the Harvest Moon, that's a Heidi Kiermaier design. I used US size 8 needles. The yarn is the Yauza What a Skein, which is their worsted weight, Miss Babs worsted weight yarn. And that color is the Homestead colorway. I absolutely love it. I am aware of that really stark line about halfway down. I did not alternate my skeins. I don't even think that was where my skein changed. The skein itself just drastically changed all of a sudden. Um, it happens. The yarn absorbs the dye differently, right? So, whatever. I still love that sweater. I don't care. It fits gloriously. The sleeves, so you can see, I ended up making them like short sleeves. Actually, they go to right about there on me. Um, they're fitted. They're, uh, which is fine. I don't mind that, um, but I definitely, like, I put it on. I've got to adjust my shirt down, my undershirt, long sleeve shirt that I'll wear underneath it. And then I'm fine to go, but the uh, fabric of my undershirt does get pulled up into it. Big whoop, who cares? Um, the pockets, I sewed one side. I'm sorry, I don't have it to show you while I'm talking. Let me put a picture on again. <laughs> um, I sewed the left side while I was vaguely remembering what mattress stitch was and how that worked and remembering to think about it as a zipper. Oh, no, I just did it. I'm going to keep going. Um, so the left pocket is really not the greatest seamsmanship. Is that a word? I don't know. The right pocket, I was on my game, and it looks beautiful the way they're stitched down there. So whatever. I'm the only one who could tell. I had Steve look at them, and he was like, what? There's a difference. So, And the variegated yarn really, really camouflages a lot of it love the pockets. I've never knit a sweater with pockets before. They are really super deep pockets. I can put my hand in and oh, it's just so cozy to have it on and those sleeves are nice and tight and it fits gloriously up here. It's just, it's probably the best sweater I've ever knit myself so I'm so stoked. I finished knitting it, tried it on, woven all my ends and put it to block or whatever. You know what I'm saying to you. Remember this was my paper line pullover. I knit this right before. Was not super happy with the finished result with this super drapey neck. And after, while that was soaking upstairs yesterday, I thought, oh, why don't I weave in my ends on this? Because this has been sitting on top of a bookshelf in my bedroom for three months, waiting for me to do something with it. And I thought, why don't I weave in my ends and I'll wear that one too. I'll have two new sweaters. And I tried it on again and I looked at it and I thought, because remember when I finished it, I was super disappointed with this neck. It doesn't look at all like the pattern. And when I put it on, I looked at it and thought, it's too drapey. That's the issue to all, that's the answer to all my problems. I made this too drapey. And Paula of the Nanny Pipeline had talked to me about it and was like, Steph, just wear it with pride and confidence and pretend like you wanted it to look the way it looks. And no one will know any wiser. And I would love to do that. I think it's great advice. But, um, oh, my bracelet. Okay. But. I wore it for like an hour yesterday with all my little strings hanging because I was trying to see how I felt about it. I love these sleeves. They're really nice and long and the contrasting cuffs are super popular um, for fall 14 because <laughs> that's what we're working on at work for clothing. So I really like that I have that on this. But again, this super drapey cowl, it's too drapey. You know why it's too drapey? Because my needle size is wrong. If I were to rip this out and go down two needle sizes, it would be much stiffer. Like, and this is the perfect example of that because this is his Milo and it's like, I don't know if you can see it. It will stand up on, on its own because it's super, I went down a needle size. This is size fives. I think Cascade typically knits on size sevens. Um, 
I don't know, I don't recall what my needles were on this, but I know it's a really drapey sweater. And yeah. Does it look completely awful? I'm gonna hope it doesn't because I was kinda cold and I'm just gonna leave it on for the rest of the show over my Doctor Who t-shirt that was one of my Christmas presents. So I may rip out this collar. I don't know. I'm not sure what I think about it. If I will or not. I think if I have the right, like a really low undershirt on underneath, like a nice black with my necklace, it could be okay. I'm still on the fence about it, but that's sort of rolling around in my head. Anyways. <laughs> Will that be too distracting for you? No. So yeah. Um, so that's the completion of one sweater and sort of like what's mulling around in my head about old sweaters I have. I have several sweaters that I just don't really wear. You know? The um, Lafay pullover that I knit that has the lace. It's um, mine is in the it's a blood red color. It's this gorgeous, it's blue, blue blood is what the color is called. And it has this lace detail down and a, 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 a little mock turtleneck on it. And I haven't blocked it. I wore it once and I didn't block it. And so this collar always rolls and it irritates me. So I don't wear it. That's like a $70 sweater, all my hard work. And I just need to block it and wear it. So I'm going to try and be better about that. And this is another example that's just got me going, oh, Stephanie. All right, what else is on my needle? So we talked about the dark and stormy a little bit. Before I show you mine, I just want to do a giveaway for this week for the knit along. So we have 339 posts in the group, and I'm going to guess half of them are mine because I talk quite a bit. But I'd like to give away a couple patterns to some of the participants in the group. So I'm just going to go to random.org, and um, let's see. the chatter has been amazing. We have one finished sweater. Um, Nancy, who I now know is Knit Knack in VA, so Knit Knack in Virginia, um, but Memphis Holly, Pattern Whisperer, there's a bunch of you out there that are so close to finishing and I admire you so much because I am on the slow train, slow train, to 84, so let's pop over. Uh, I keep going to my projects tab. Maybe I should close that. Have we talked about how much we love our iPads? It's like the podcaster's best friend. It should really be a knitter's best friend. What did I say? 284? 284 is... Well, I'm just going to do it because it is what it is. It is Pattern Whisperer over here on the board. And... She is saying she'll be starting her sleeve soon, but that was on the 15th, so I, I know she's further than that. And she's a sweetheart, Jerry. She sent me a note saying, don't be upset if I disappear out of the group once my sweater's done, which is totally understandable. Um, I love hearing what everybody has to say, and there's so much help over there. So if you are knitting one and you want to join, go on over and please do. Uh, Ugh. Too hot, too hot. So the second one is number 330. Uh, so Jerry, shoot me a PM and I will gift you a pattern of your choosing. So, do, do, do. 330 is going to be on the last page. And that is... Ah, oh, Calico Kitty 6! <laughs> She recently had an incident that has caused her to slow down her knitting, so I hope you're feeling much better. Um, get in touch with me, and I'll shoot you over a pattern as well. That's Debbie. All right, so there we go. Jerry and Debbie, you want some patterns. So um, I'm going to keep doing random prizes throughout the knit along. So again, more incentive. And Nancy... Knit Knack in VA is sending a prize drawing as well, so that's really sweet of her. And all this talk about the color affection, Roland was digging in my bag this morning. So here's where I am. I know, don't be disappointed. I'm going as fast as I can. So, I mean, it really, it's been three weeks and I've done one, two, three, four, five. Five cable repeats on it. So you can see those. Oh, I can see the part where I dropped down. 
based on the distance in there. Yep, that one, I had to rip back one cable repeat because it was twisted the wrong way. I've split off for the sleeves, which is why I'm in sleeves. So I'd knit two sleeves and now I'm working on a third. I split off for the sleeves and I really just wanted to a break. I didn't really want to do this cable knitting so much anymore. So I thought that would be a nice change for me. Plus everyone else is knitting the body and I just want to go do something else and be a little different. I'm along with you, but a little different. So. Um, here I am. The sleeves have you do, I think it's 17 decreases for my size, and I've done five, so I'm about a third of the way down the sleeve. It's great. It's a little loose, a little looser, maybe half an inch looser than I would like, but again, the Harvest Moon, I made that a fitted sleeve, so this will probably be better that it's a little looser. I do have to say that when I put it on, which I'm going to do for you, um, there's supposed to be a three inch I'm gonna put it on, but perhaps I will strangle myself or put it on upside down. No, nope, I put it on upside down earlier. There's supposed to be. <laughs> this is the episode where Steph is just awkward. Um, there's supposed to be a three inch button band that goes on the front. And as you can see, these really, I mean, it's close. It's gonna be. I don't know. I mean, they can overlap comfortably right now. So it might be a big sweater and looking at other people's finished projects and how much waist shaping they've got on it based, based on following the pattern instructions. When I get there, I'm probably going to do some drastic waist starts because I do have that big difference between my bust and my uh, abdomen, torso, whatever. And putting on the um, Harvest Moon just really and that last, the paper line pullover, it's really jumping out to me the difference between I really shouldn't be knitting to my bust size. It's too big. It's too big and bulky and boxy and I'm wasting it. So um, I'm definitely going to do some bust shaping or darts down below. Um, this yarn is Cascade 220 Heathers, not super wash, and it's color 2424. I'm using US size sixes. I've got sixes. I've got needles everywhere. So. <laughs> There, here's my interchangeable knit picks, interchangeable cord holding the body, and then there's how my sleeve is going so far. So, I know it's slow. Next week, you're gonna see some serious progress. I'm gonna say that I will have two sleeves done by next week, it's gonna be something amazing. And I feel like rolling. Okay, there, <laughs> out of the yarn. Oh, this is my cow. Mm. Uh, yeah, so there's the dark and stormy. It's coming, it's coming. And that's, you know, we're still waiting on. And then lastly, on the needles right now, currently, I gotta adjust. I'm sorry, I just feel ugh, awkward. Um, my prayer socks that I was knitting on. Thank you all for reaching out to me and just saying, you know what, it's okay. You can have emotions and we all still love you. So that was really, really sweet of you. And thank you for sending your prayers for my cousin Stacy and her son Patrick. Um, they are, so we are on week three and a half since he had the transplant and on Friday they are going home. So it's awesome, 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 awesome. My dad's going down to Boston to get them on Friday. They're gonna spend the night with my parents and then drive the rest of the way back to their house because it's like a, I wanna say it's a 10 hour drive to Boston. Yeah, they're from really Northern Maine. <laughs> So um, I'm so excited. He's doing really great. Stacy was saying that she was hoping that this week, they, or the goal for this week, is to get him to walk a, a few blocks at a time. So to get him just, you know, to help him work his heart and get some energy. It's like, oh, good, 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 good. So this is my first one. First sock, or I guess it's now my second sock. <laughs> I have two socks going at the same time because I don't, I, purse knitting is mindless knitting. And I don't want to get stuck at a point where I need to turn a heel, which is exactly where this one is. Well, I need to do the gusset, but then turn the heel. And so I was just working on the both at the same time. So this first sock now has a turned heel and I'm starting up the leg. Um, Stacy wears a size six. So these are wee tiny socks. It's, it's amazing. Um, using US size ones. And this is my 716 worse than a zombies colorway. Uh, if you are knitting self-striping socks, you should do yourself a favor and go join the Stockinette Zombies 
knit along for self-striping socks. You can enter one pair per month for uh, Megan's giving away a skein a month of self-striping sock yarn. So my Desert Vista Dye Works were my January pair. These are going to be my February pair. So that's where I'm at with these. You can see I'm up to starting the gusset increases on the second one, which is mindless enough. And I did work in um, some extra yarn to try and keep the stripe repeat the same. Through the gusset increases, I pulled off, I want to say, 15 yards. I mean, it wasn't a lot just to, you know, carry along and make sure that they stayed about the same size because I'm anal and I don't like that gusset increase rows can make the stripes narrower. I mean, a row or two narrower are fine. And you can see that they're still, I mean, the green is a little less, but whatever. Good enough. And this is just a two by two rib. That's all. Just simple, straight ahead knitting. So, so excited. I'm not going to have this in time for, I have this finished obviously in time for Friday when they head home, but I'll send them a care package in the coming weeks. So that'll be nice for her to get. She has no idea. I was, we were talking the other day and I was just like, hey, what size shoes do you wear? Oh, I don't know. I work at a footwear company. I'm just curious. <laughs> so that's what's going on on the needles right now. Um, the only other thing I wanted to talk to you and share with you is this lovely, lovely, lovely. I ordered some yarn from Miss Babs. I love Miss Babs yarn. Um, I ordered the Color Affection Kit. It's like Impatient, Impatience, and Swamp Thing. Swamp Fang <laughs> were the three colors in it. This is the Fingering Weight Kit. Swamp Thing, I'm not showing you right here. So I looked at some people's finished projects over on Rav. Beautiful. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. But I know me and that bright, bright electric green color, I'm not gonna wear it. And I will wear something more muted that's purples. And so I just substituted it in. I have a skein of, actually this is my absolute most favorite color by Miss Babs ever. I saw it, I stocked it, I, I, like, I covet this color. This is Deep Sea Jellyfish. It is the most beautiful color in the entire world. I absolutely love it. So it has the, um, the base color is like a slate and that goes high and low. And then there's some hot pink pops, some violet, some rust color. It's just oh, so beautiful. And so the hot pink pops kind of match some of the hot pink in this one. I don't know which one's impatient and which one's impatience. But then the dark purple just contrasts it beautifully. And so that's the way I'm thinking I'm knitting my color affection with the dark purple being the base. So look for that coming soon to needles near you. And then uh, for my, one of my goals, I had, okay, so I have clear needles and I can't just knit sweaters and 1200 yard shawls. Um, so I need to have a small accessory type project. So next up, I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards the welted toque from Weekend Hats. And that's by Melissa Lebray. Um, it's great. It's a sport, we sport weight hat, 150 yards. Okay, I was looking at people's projects over on Rav, and they were saying they use like 130 yards, and that just seemed really small to me. But um, So I also got this skein of Yummy shadow sport weight from Miss Babs and this is the Timberline colorway which is really like a, a warm brown purple euchre color. It's very dark but it has some really nice highs and lows in it and it's super soft so I'm thinking that 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 is going to be that. Next up on the needles. Subject to change in the whim and a whim of inspiration but that's what I'm looking at. So um, I haven't talked much about Roland for a while, so I just thought I'd tell you his last checkup. So he's 16 months old. We kind of fell behind with the holidays and didn't get him in. Like we couldn't line up his appointment right for his 15 month checkup, so it fell a little late and we went this past Friday, hence the shots. And um, he's still my giant, giant boy at the 98th percentile for height. And he's so he's 33 inches tall, that's what it means, and he's 29 pounds and a little, and that makes him 90th percentile for weight, and so he is the perfect size of a two-year-old. <laughs> he's like 50-50 for a two-year-old, so that's, 
Roland's news. Yeah, he's still saying hi and bye, and uh, we didn't see our usual doctor. We saw a really nice, because she was booked out. Um, we saw a really nice older doctor, who, like my dad's age, you know, totally grandpa. And um, he had gave the advice after spending 10 minutes with us that given how particular and controlling Roland is, you know, he likes his, don't put that toy in a place where it doesn't go, I like it where it goes. And he gets very upset if you mess up his things. And if one container doesn't fit in another, he'll get upset. So the doctor was saying, given that, make sure you're giving him choices. You know, he can have, you know, this for dinner or that for dinner. And don't really push too hard with the, no, this is for dinner and this is what we're eating, that type of stuff. Because it's just going to frustrate all three of us. So. I thought that was interesting. He was a really nice doctor, though. I'm not going to leave our regular regular doctor. I love her to pieces, but, um, yeah. So that's Roland's update. Other than that, is he doing any new tricks? No. No. He's just wearing corduroys and knitted vests and looking like a total preppy little boy. Hi. So. How are you today? Is your mood quite terrific or only okay? What's that? Is that your popper? Show me how the popper works. Nice. You want to go for a ride in the car? You want to go outside? Yeah? Okay. We'll go outside. Bye, Rowan. Bye-bye, Brooks. Thank you. So, that's all from me for this week. I hope you have a great 10 days or so until we chat again. And enjoy your knitting. Take care. Bye.